Can you do the honours, Hannah? Hello, world. Hello, world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're around Hannah's mum and dad's house today. Uh, Hannah's dad has got a hi-fi system. I didn't really know this. So uh, here we have the furniture unit that this hi-fi system is sitting in. We have a suggested classical collection for the beginner here, which I think has just been left there to kind of, I don't know whether it's to take the piss, I don't know what it's for, but <laughs> is that true, Hannah? Possibly. Possibly, yeah. We're moving down here to a Project Debut Carbon DC uh, record player with, I'm going to lift this up here, this is the Autophon 2M Red cartridge on here. So we're going to have a little listen to that. You're not going to be listening to that, I'm afraid, well, because uh, of uh, copyright infringement and stuff like that. But Hannah and I are going to have a listen. Now, uh, Songs in the Key of Life Side 4 has been sitting on there for rather a long time, which is worrying me. So, yeah. Um, mm. Right, there's a cassette deck there, which I'd forgotten about. Otherwise, I would have brought one of my own tapes to listen to. But if there's time, I might have a little listen to that. And uh, that's an Iowa stereo cassette deck XK007 Excelia. Looks like a single deck, obviously. Uh, has Dolby B, C and HX Pro on there. No Dolby S. Um, yeah, it looks pretty. Oh, it's a three head thing, which is pretty good because then you can do some tape monitoring and stuff like that. But the real thing that we're going to be listening to today, this is the Roxanne Candy K2 amplifier which is an integrated amplifier with five line inputs, one phono input and a tape loop. So pretty standard fare, okay. Uh, but it's 200 watts per channel, which is a bit more powerful than my Riga. And then we have the Roxanne Candy CD player down here. I'm not quite sure of the specifications of this. I don't know whether or not it's got um, uh, any optical or coaxial uh, digital inputs on it, but maybe I could just try and find that out a bit later on. So moving over here, uh, I've, I'm filming one here, but these are Rogers, what's the model number of these? I'm uh, not sure. We're not sure of the model number, but these are Rogers speakers dating back from the late 60s, I think, early 70s, something like that, and they've been in the family for how long, dear? Um, Probably since the late 70s, early 80s. Oh, so they've been, yeah, okay. They're so, my dad's at university. Yeah, oh, fine. Yeah. Oh, fine. He has actually got proper speaker stands on them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this, um, we're just going to have some great fun listening to these Rogers speakers. Um, and as I say, the the project and the, and the rock sands. So uh, I'm not exactly sure how much of this we'll get to listen to but I have brought some listening material and it's my usual fare so Hannah is holding up now Brett Den and Hope for the Hopeless Joan Armour Trading uh, This Charming Life must have Joan Armour Trading must have Joe McGeldry. Ah, here's what I believe Wonderful, yes. we love him I've got yes. Shaq here uh, HMS Fable which is a jolly good album which we might play um I've got Cooler Shaker, Peasants, Pigs and Astronauts on CD. Okay, is that the... That's all the CDs. That's all the CDs that I've brought with me. Because I've been oh. playing this album to death, I have brought uh, Fleetwood Max Rumours. This is a, a, an 80s stroke, 70s, I don't know, um, pressing of uh, Fleetwood Mac. It's no fancy remaster or anything like that. I've brought semi-precious weapons round. This is the their aviation album because, as you lot know, uh, it's a blooming hard album to reproduce, and I want to see exactly what the uh, the two M Red is capable of doing. So, got that one, and I've got a brand new pressing. Uh, this is a an anniversary pressing of uh, Songs in the Key of Life. Okay, so we can finally take off that one yes. and put the other one on all right okay so we're going to have some fun listening now uh, and i'll come back to you when i'm back around mine and i will detail to you my findings okay folks bye bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> so hello world we're back at mine now and i'm going to give you my thoughts on hannah's dad's roxanne system i will say right from the outset that he, his speakers are not 
set up correctly in his room. They're way too far apart, which made the stereo very vague. And that is really, I suppose, if you're thinking about it, it's, it's the my most negative comment about the whole thing. Everything else is positive. Um, I do think that you know, my system is different from his. It does do things better because it's in a whole different budget region, particularly with the vinyl. I think what I'm going to do is just take you through track by track and just tell you, you know, just what I wrote down because it's a bit difficult to kind of get my thoughts together on this, really. So with this charming life, I put bass response even exclamation mark. Here's my notepad. And I wrote, yeah, bass response even. What it wasn't was the thing that I've experienced in previous incarnations of systems, which I've told you about, where the um, uh, certain notes were exciting the room resonances and others just totally disappeared. Like I've mentioned with the um, erasure track, uh, A Little Respect, for example, even playing that on vinyl, you just noticed in uh, previous incarnations of my system that the bass has just been there one minute, gone the next minute. And when it was there, you really noticed it and you could feel it in on the radiator and the wall behind you. And at other times, you just didn't notice it at all. So, yeah, mm, it wasn't that. Joan Armour Trading's for some reason, I think she just likes to prove that she can play bass. And so, with some songs, she actually mixes that bass up very high. Um, and the system made a very good job of that. What it didn't make a very good job of, as I've said, is the stereo response. It was immediately obvious. And the same with most of the tracks there, that the stereo uh, and the touchability of instruments and people that the the feeling that they're actually occupy a certain amount of space in the sound stage that was all gone okay it was you know, it was you know just a wash and you know you didn't get this etched out feeling of instruments that the rigas produce it was quite rhythmic it was quite rhythmic um particularly because the rogers speakers were Again, that you know, they are a product of their time, and so they were rolled off at the treble, and they were also rolled off at the bass, so that you didn't get any real deep bass, but you got the upper regions of the bass, and they were you know quite detailed and quite rhythmic. You could actually pick out you know particular uh, bass twiddles and stuff like that that you know perhaps you know. I hadn't even been aware of when I was listening to it on my system, you know. Um, with Natalie's party, Hannah said to me, it's all flat, it's all on one volume level. That's uh, the Shack CD. It's a very badly recorded CD and I do tend to try and include a few badly recorded uh, bits of music just to kind of see whether or not a system can make it sound palatable. Certainly sounded palatable, but you know, that treble roll off was very, very evident. And um, the, as I say, the dynamic range was also very evident in the fact that it was compressed, you know, that it was a compressed track. Make You Crazy by Brett Denon. That was uh, quite a loudness ward track. In fact, it is a quite loudness ward track. We know that. Um, so I thought I'd sh shove that on. It's a great song, fabulous song and everything. Uh, yeah, pretty much same overall characteristics. It had a bit more oomph because it was Loudness Ward, but it was rolled off at the treble. I thought that the bass there was particularly good in terms of um, how intricately it produced some of the twiddles there. In fact, even twiddles that I hadn't heard. His falsetto was lovely. In the um, There's a rap part in there, and Brett Denon is singing over that rap, and... That was really nice to hear. Uh, very smooth, very creamy. The sound of drums, again, it's pretty much the same. Um, that very, very smooth treble. Um, the sound stage here, I was aware that it had moved well back. 
a while back and you didn't get this kind of feeling which you should be getting with that song in that it's like um, a, a, a chant and that the the thing should be coming from a distance and moving towards you and you didn't get that feeling which the Regas can produce uh, and again I think that was probably down to the uh, the poor stereo separation you know I, I'm not going to lie and say that it was entirely down to the way that the speakers have been set up but I think um, uh, the candies are probably quite vague on that you know great tonal balance perhaps you could have done with a little bit more treble but you know other, other than that a great tonal balance but you know just not this feeling of the of the instruments being there with you you know i think you know you would go into his house and you play that stereo and you know if you'd never heard anything else you would just be over the moon with it you know uh, but when you have heard a budget layer above that then you get to realize how it's actually underperforming in that area now joe mckeldry here's what i believe lovely airy acoustic guitar at the beginning and it blends very well into the mix when it gets busier the pizzicato strings were not etched out in the way that I again I've heard them before on my system on my latest system that was one of the things that I first raved about when I first replaced the Elex R amplifier with the Elicit R amplifier I still had the RS5 speakers in my system at that point but I put that CD on and I just died at the fact of, of how beautifully crisp and articulate those pizzicato strings were and they still are with my PMCs but it just didn't have that kind of uh, the, the rock sands as I say just you know again we were going back to this kind of slushy vagueness um, about the way that those were reproduced and uh, yeah it didn't quite give me the same thrill. Bass was very smooth but as I say because of that upper bass lift it sounded just a tad overdone and the dynamic range was curtailed but beautiful mid-range vocals and again I think that's something that you can take from uh, the candy system overall is that the mid-range is lovely okay the treble is rolled off the bass is over accentuated but not to the point that it's going to overexcite room frequencies. There are some lovely backing vocals in uh, Joe McEldry's work in that in that song, and they actually they they verge on orgasmic. You just think how beautiful and how kind of you know it it, it just makes you want to fall in love with him. And I don't care who you are. You know, you'll listen to that song and you would just fall in love with the bloke. You know, I've just been playing it now and I really wanted to sing to that and, you know, I couldn't quite reach the high notes and whatever, but I was certainly miming along to it, air singing, as it were. The Candies did not produce that because the dynamic range, as we noticed in the Shack track, the Shack track just didn't give you that. It's not necessarily something that I think you would notice if you weren't, if you hadn't heard any better, but it certainly uh, was noticeable to me. Right, moving on to the Project Debut Carbon DC record player. Now this is a record player that is 350 quid with the 2M Red cartridge on there. It would probably push it to something like 400, 450 quid, something like that. And I actually think, but you know, again, this is me and my bias is coming out here, but I actually think that the vinyl did a far better job with the amplifier and the, uh, and the speakers, okay? Yes, there was still a certain lack of 
touchability with the stereo. There was still a certain amount of vagueness, but it was nowhere near as prominent as it was with the, uh, with the CD player. That could be because of, I don't know, I mean, maybe the leads from the amp to the CD player were not particularly good quality, or maybe even one was connected out of phase, I don't know. But certainly, the minute that we put on the vinyl, we noticed that the stereo separation had increased and was actually extremely, well, not extremely good, but was far better than with the CD player. I left the volume the same to start with, and Stevie Wonder sounded weak in comparison, but that is normal for uh, built-in phono stages on amplifiers. It's also probably quite normal uh, because of the low-end cartridge that was on there. But I say low-end, not in a patronising sense. That is about the lowest end that I would say could reproduce hi-fi well. Okay, you don't want to go to anything of the Riga Carbon or 8095E or anything like that. That 2M Red is actually a good cartridge. So yeah, the whole thing got a bit more of a groove on. That's what I've put here. It is slightly thinner. You have not got that, that kind of thickness of the base because probably the phono stage and cartridge. I think the 2M Blue would make a much better uh, fist of things in, in, in that sense. But it certainly got its groove on. I was certainly pleased with that. We turned it up a little bit so that we got uh, a similar volume for the CDs as we did for the records when we listened to The Chain by uh, Fleetwood Mac. And yep, bass, still much leaner than the CD, but better balanced, okay? The treble is still ultimately rolled off but uh, and the stereo separation was I've put here better stereo separation but only better I have to say that the cartridge is very detailed and I really wanted to carry on playing that record in fact I did okay with the CDs it was oh right we've listened to that track next one next one next one there was nothing there with the candies that made you want to just carry on listening and listening and listening with the project it's the first time I've heard a project turntable I was really impressed with it you know just you know for, for 350 quid no it's not a Riga RP8 it does not pound out music and etch it with with beautiful detail and and that kind of thing but it certainly puts a smile on your face it reminds me of my gold ring lenko you know just it, it, it you know you start thinking oh oh it's not as powerful as cd is it but then suddenly you listen and, and you and you listen closer and then suddenly that smile comes on your face and as i say it really didn't take very long it only took me to put Fleetwood Mac on and suddenly whoom and I really just wanted to carry on listening and listening and listening and I did. I think I listened to the whole side of that LP. It was just great. And uh, I didn't write any notes down for semi-precious weapons. Uh, again, it would take a special record player to really make any kind of sense out of that album. but we just enjoyed it it was just very enjoyable um yeah the bass on it is just m murky and uh just not a, a a great listening experience in terms of that but the music's fabulous and we just you know the the project just conveyed that the music was fabulous really and again just carried on listening to it. Hannah and I were air punching the ceiling and stuff like that, and we just really, really enjoyed it. Aviation High is just such a fantastic track, but then, you know, we just carried on listening and listening and listening, and it was only because time was running away with us and we had other things to do that um, that we, we turned it off. It was a shame, because I would just love to have just played both sides of that album, you know, brilliant. Okay, so yeah, Hannah's dad, you have a lovely system there. Sort your speakers out though. 
push them closer together, toe them in a bit more. That's all I would say, really. Um, and maybe just check your leads just in case uh, the leads from the CD player is not quite, uh, you know, uh, as, as good as it should be. Maybe replace it with a, you know, something that's a little bit better. Um, QED do some great leads for about 20 quid. And uh, yeah, chuck one of those in. I got Ben one of those for his CD player uh, for his birthday. And yeah, um, he's pleased with it. So yeah. Right, so that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you could kind of um, make sense of, of how it felt. Don't not buy a Roxanne just because I've mentioned about the candy and the, and the vague stereo and whatever. Listen for yourself and just see what you see what you think okay right see you later draw